final report into the Grenfell Tower fire has found that a culture of systemic dishonesty among construction firms, a failure of politicians to act on warnings led to the tragedy, which of course claimed 72 lives. Keir Starmer said the report identified substantial and widespread failings and the government will carefully consider the recommendations to ensure that such a tragedy cannot happen again. The families and friends of those who died said justice has not been delivered. Watching all of this unfold this morning and with details of that report, talk reporter Nick Ellaby is there for us. Nick, what is the latest? Hi. Hi, Ian. Good afternoon. You mentioned, you know, justice, and that's really what the families of, of Grenfell want to see. And actually, very sadly, this inquiry, however important and painstaking uh, it's been and well put together, it's actually delayed justice. What a lot of the families are saying they want to see are criminal convictions. Uh, but it sounds like they've been told that this report means that charges of manslaughter are going to be very, very difficult to bring. And you mentioned at the top there in your introduction the systematic dishonesty that this report, uh, the allegations that this report levels at those construction firms uh, selling that cladding and insulation that they knew not to be fit for purpose. And actually, we're hearing that uh, Arconic, the, the US firm and its French subsidiary, knew how flammable this cladding was as far back as 2013, but continued to sell it under false pretenses. Two companies as well uh, selling insulation that they knew to be uh, of bad quality. And, you know, in terms of cutting corners and, and, and actually the chair of the inquiry, uh, Sir Martin Morbick recommended, uh, he actually mentioned the greed of these companies um, in leading to the 72 deaths as well. And, and on top of that, incompetence in government, both at a national level with the Communities and Housing Department, which the report says is, is very badly run, um, but also at a local level as well. The landlord, the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, accused of, of negligence and, and not looking after uh, these people and also not implementing the proper fire and safety rules. And then we've got the London Fire Brigade as well. We had phase one of the report in 2019 detail that their failure to lift that stay put order led to the deaths of a lot of you know a lot of avoidable deaths and this report today phase two saying all 72 deaths were avoidable and it's really really it's heart heart wrenching to see i've just been actually behind me in the, the hotel the royal lancaster here in west london there's a grenfell united families press conference and and it started with a 72 second silence to remember uh, all of those people who lost their lives and, and now the process of trying to look at those criminal convictions uh, will continue. The police have started that but you know nothing was able to really be set in motion properly until this inquiry finished and we're probably not going to see any convictions until 2027. So these families are being denied justice but also on top of that their pain is being raked over by this inquiry and, and it must be so traumatic for them and again not getting the justice and the closure that they want and deserve. In terms of that report the recommendations Ian is that the government brings responsibility for fire safety under one Secretary of State rather than three or four different departments as it was previously. Also, fire engineers, the job of a fire engineer um, being made sort of recognised and, and courses to deliver more of those for the country and licensing for contractors. But these are all things that you would have thought would have been in place already and seem quite basic. So a lot of questions as to why that wasn't happening. Um, but we should see a, a kind of a criminal inquiry uh, set in motion certainly in the next few weeks and months. Nick, thank you very much indeed. Our reporter Nick Ellaby there currently outside the Royal Lancaster Hotel where that press conference with victims and family members and relatives of those who died at Grenfell is taking place as we speak. Let's speak with Steph Pike uh, from the End Our Cladding Scandal organisation. That's a resident-led campaign calling on the government to fix the cladding and the building safety crisis. Afternoon to you, Steph. Thanks for being with us. Hi, Ian. Hi. Um, what's interesting about this, when you look at the, the various conclusions that w were made in the, uh, in the report today, um, obviously politicians and administrators will do the pointing and the, the blame game. It was their fault. It was, their, you know, that, that department didn't speak to that department. And on and on it will go. But with the cladding companies themselves, there, there's no get-out clause for these guys. This is damning stuff. This was deliberate. It was known. It was executed and sold on the market despite everything screaming at them that this stuff was not safe. Yet they went on for years selling this stuff. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I have no words for it. It's outrageous. 
um, not only does it seem that every single level of organization or individual who is involved in you know the 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 remedi the, the cladding um, project with Grenfell and signing off that building was incompetent in addition to that it also seems that there was people were lying people knew about the risks and they just carried on with a total disregard um for for human life when, when i was reading um elements of of this report steph i i I just simply could not believe that big, huge, multi-million pound companies, uh, and maybe this is naive on my part, but huge companies uh, that were told uh, that, that what you're making here and are going to apply to people's homes, to people's homes, not some sort of distant warehouse with nobody in it, to people's homes. What is very dangerous, if it caught fire, the building and the people within it stand a risk of dying. They continue to do this despite all of the evidence telling them not to. And we know there will inevitably, or we hope there will be some criminal action to come, but that might take a long while. That could be a few more years down the line. Yeah, I just think it's incredible how these people knew what they were essentially applying petrol, um, selling products that were as flammable as petrol and allowing them to be applied to the outside of these residential buildings. Um, I, I guess all in the, all in the name of making money. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope that, that this report today is sufficient to not to be a step towards securing justice um, for the victims and the bereaved and the survivors of Grenfell. Um, obviously, it is not justice yet because no criminal charges have been brought, but I hope that they could be brought as soon as possible. Yeah. And also, I hope it's a step in the to kind of speed up um, the remediation of all these other buildings. Thousands of other buildings across the UK are still covered in flammable cladding and have other fire safety defects, which, you know, as it stands, um, there could well be another Grenfell um, on the way. And, th yeah. and this is, uh, I mean, this is the point, isn't it? I mean, we, we obviously and correctly focus on Grenfell today, but this cladding yeah. is all over the place. I mean, it's, it's yeah. all over the world, but it's in this country, uh, various boroughs, various councils, exactly the same mistakes were made. Uh, the lack of accountability, the lack of checks, the and all that goes with it. Um, it, it defies party politics in, in, in many respects. I know there's been some focus on that, but nonetheless, you could go around the UK and find plenty of other places that were built in exactly the same way. Yeah, exactly. And the progress since Grenfell, I mean, we're over seven years on now, and the progress has been painfully slow. I, 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 but, but for example, my building, we've only just had our scaffolding put up. Um, and, and work starting, and, and I'm one of the lucky ones. I think numerous other buildings haven't even been assessed to, to see how dangerous they are. So the, I really hope that the Labour government can now, you know, urgently um, get things going yeah. and get this stuff off the buildings. Otherwise, yeah, we need to avoid this, anything uh, as horrific as this happening again. How widespread is it, Steph? I mean, what what, what is the, the, the what is the data telling us in terms of other buildings that, you know, I mean, there's another human um, story there as well of people who are living in yeah. apartments that are worth about two pound fifty now because they can't do anything with them. They certainly can't yeah. be solved, and that requires another legal battle for those people against manufacturers, and, and and it goes on. How widespread is this material, this this horrendous stuff, on buildings still in this country? Um. So. The numbers, the exact numbers are not known. Um, but there's, we estimate that there's around 11,000 buildings plus um, that are that currently have fire safety issues, and that means there's, you know, you're looking at nearly 400,000 leaseholders potentially more who are living in these potentially unsafe buildings but the scale is is really not known at the moment and it, and it only seems to be increasing so it's 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 huge it, this is a huge problem and um the, the government you know needs to sit up take actions implement the recommendations of this report um and ensure that everyone 
lives in a in a safe home, which yeah. is you know the basic human right. Well, I mean, it's the twenty first century. You know, if you if you were sort of looking at this objectively and knew nothing about the story, you would imagine we were talking about buildings that were built under the reign of Queen Victoria or something. You know, look at how they used to build stuff back in the day. It was terrible. It was it breached every rule. Uh, this is from twenty seventeen, for goodness sake. Yeah, it, it's ridiculous. And actually, it seems to be a lot of um, my flat was a new build and it was completed after 20, after Grenfell. And so it's not just it, it, it seems to be a lot of new builds as well who yeah. have these problems because they're built very cheaply. You know, it's a race to the bottom. No one really cares. As long as the project is cheap, then, yeah, who cares what what? The material is and that yeah. seems to be the attitude of everyone in the construction industry and it needs to change and what's interesting as well given that we live in quite a sort of global world when it comes to business is that a lot of these materials were banned in other countries but germany springs to mind but certainly other places but already so you you might think that when somebody is assessing you know what do we use when you've got your sort of colour chart equivalent of cladding or uh, the materials required? You might sort of want to take a look at where else it's being used and the track record of safety. Yeah, and I think that that just goes to show how weak our regulations were. And they were sort of that was a, a loophole that um, some of the product manufacturers of Grenfell used mm. to sell their products in the UK because they they knew that we had weaker regulations and that they knew that they could get away with putting that flammable stuff on that building. Um, so yeah, as I said at the beginning, it's a failure of every single organisation involved from the government to the product manufacturers, manufacturers and everyone in between. Absolutely right. Listen, Steph, Thank you for speaking with us today. Appreciate that. Steph Pike from the End Our Cladding Scandal organisation. That is a resident-led campaign, um, essentially just calling for... Well, I mean, you could call it common sense, you can call it justice. Action, really. You know, buildings that are still covered in this stuff. I mean, how on earth did we ever get to that? You know, we live in a world of health and safety, which is, you know, how often do we talk about, you know, health and safety gone mad, uh, but there are clearly times when health and safety is absolutely right and appropriate and the, the only consideration. And you'd think building a massive tower block, wherever it happens to be, or re refurbishing one, uh, that'd be right up there, wouldn't it? On the to-do list of the planners, right, what are we cladding this stuff with? If somebody had a box of matches near it, would it go up or would it not? Right, OK, let's not use that stuff then. What the hell happened? 72 people have not yet had justice. Don't hold your breath, but we will wait and see whether criminal charges are brought against those certainly responsible for the manufacturing, the selling and the lying of the quality of the material they were selling on.